So I was really happy to learn that Slay the Spire was released on iPhone and iPad quite recently. And um, it's been a really great experience playing the game on the go. But uh, one thing that really disappointed me was that you, you couldn't actually transfer your save games from the Mac or the PC to the iPhone or the iPad. And the iPhone and iPad also didn't support iCloud syncing of the save game files. So I had a little think about how to solve this issue and to carry one's progress between platforms. And I came up with this solution. So the main thing that you'll need is to have your iOS device that you want to transfer the save game to and from be jailbroken. So what I'm going to do is link a couple of really good tutorials which will help you to figure out how to actually jailbreak on your particular device. I believe that almost all devices are supported at this current moment except for the very, very latest patch, which is 13.5.1. And um, there may be other ways to jailbreak that particular model. But anyway, this particular fix applies to any model of iOS device that is jailbroken uh, present or future versions as well. So I'm sure that in the future, when a new version of the operating system is released, then you'll be able to apply the same technique to transfer the saves over. If I show you first of all this Mac save, uh, I can see that there's not much progress been made, but I do have one um, completion on the silent and I've got the ascension level one on my Mac. And um, if I show you the stats that I've got as well, I can see there's you know one victory, three deaths, etc. And I've got this kind of run history. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is transfer this save data from my Mac to my iPhone, which I've got um, jailbroken. So the save game data location can be found on the Slay the Spire PC Gaming Wiki article. So for a the Mac version of the game, we can find the data within the app itself and on the Windows version it's contained within the, the path there. On the Mac and PC versions of the game, the there are three folders which are involved in saving your data. There's the beta preferences folder, the runs folder and the saves folder. So if you look inside saves you'll see um, particular well, that's the actual uh, quick save for the actual run itself. Here we've got um, previous entries of uh, historical runs and the preferences folder is probably what you're most interested in. It, it will contain the player data, achievement data, and it will be, have your progress for the ascension runs as well. So this is these three folders are the ones that we want to make sure we copy over. So what I do on a Mac is I select all of the folders and I will right click, well, control click, and then I'm going to compress these three items. Okay, and it's going to create an archive for me in the resource and just there. And um, what I'm going to do is rename this documents Mac. Okay, just to make it very clear what that is exactly. So um, all I need to do is share it with my phone. So there's various ways to do this. You can email it to yourself or you could easily airdrop it or message it to yourself. But here we go. So here I'm going to send it to my phone directly. So I'm just going to airdrop it to myself and my phone is going to receive it. And when the airdrop comes on my phone, what I'm going to do is open it with a specific uh, application. So I'm going to make sure that I've got Filza um, installed as a jailbreak app and I'm going to open it. We're using Filza now. Okay. So now this documents.mac.zip is on my phone. I'm going to hold down on the actual uh, file itself and I'm going to press move at the bottom of the screen here. And that's going to kind of put it in the clipboard like a cut and paste. And then I'm going to press the star button and then I'm going to go to Apps Manager and then I will scroll down to Slay the Spire. So 
So opening Slay the Spire, and then what I have here is an existing documents folder. So what I'm going to do is completely delete this folder. And then I'm going to press the clipboard on the bottom left and then press the paste button. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is when I press this um, documents-mac.zip, what it's going to do is uh, open up the file and extract it into this folder. So I'm just going to check the um, folder itself. So what I'm going to do is hold down the beta preferences, click on rename, and then change this particular file to preferences. So I'm just going to do that by deleting the word beta and then entering the word preferences. So I'm going to go back now. And I'm also going to rename this particular folder documents. So I'm just going to remove this um, differentiator, which I added in earlier. So I'm just going to make sure that this is named documents and not documents-mac. Now when I open um, when I open Slay the Spire again, just make sure it's closed to begin with. Instead of having those three empty save game slots, I should be logging in directly into my default one. Yes, here it is. And now this should be my Mac save file. So yes, here, here we've got the silent at Ascension level one. We've got my previous runs. So if I look at my statistics and my run history, this is the same as the one that I had on my Mac. And um, the, the save data is all there. So um, this particular method can be used to transfer data between the Mac and the phone. And I've also tried with the Windows computer and the phone as well. And I'm and I'm perfectly sure that this is going to be possible to transfer between the phone and the and the iPhone and the iPad as well. So um, that's a way of transferring data between all of these devices. Um, hopefully the developers of Slave the Spire will introduce some kind of data transfer because you can see that the saved data is perfectly portable between all platforms. So I hope that they implement something like this soon so we don't have to rely on jailbreaking um, in order to transfer this data. So one of the consequences of being able to access Slay the Spire's file system is that it opens up the opportunity to save scum a little bit. Now obviously save scumming is going to defeat the purpose of playing a roguelike. It's not going to let you improve at the game and it, it totally goes against what the game is about, which is uh, randomized levels and adapting to different circumstances, etc. In many ways, save scumming is not really necessary because if, if you look here, right, if I do some actions in the game, then um, I've taken some health off this first enemy. If I go to menu and click um, save and quit here, then it's going to say that my progress is saved. And actually, if I continue this run, what's going to happen is that the enemies reset. So if you find that you've done a bad move, you can just quit and return to the game and the, the enemies will have re, you know, restarted from the beginning of this particular combat. Right. But if you wanted to do something a little bit more ambitious, for example, if you wanted to start your run earlier again, you know, from the beginning, with all the knowledge that you've gained from this run so far, then what you could do is make a copy of the quick save of the game. So, for example, um, if I'd saved earlier in the game, uh, that, that would have been more useful, but I'll show you how to do it now. So if I press save and quit now, and um, if I go to uh, Filza again, so if I come out of this and I head into Filza, and what I've done is I've navigated back into the Slay the Spire folder, and if I go into Documents here and I check the Saves folder, what I've got here is the save that I have for that run which I just saved in the game. And um, what you might want to do is make a copy of this save. So all you need to do is hold down on the save and then press copy and then paste it back into the folder. And you've got a, a 
a backup of your save. So when you die, this main autosave uh, file gets automatically deleted. Um, let me show you quickly. I could just, if I just uh, take a load of damage and die, I will show you what happens. And if I go back to the main menu, I can, I don't have a continue button anymore. So what I'm going to do is close the, the application, right, and go back to Filza, and I refresh this. So that defect autosave is gone, but what I could do is simply, I could make a copy, or I could just rename this file into the correct numbering scheme so that the bracket one is not there anymore. So now I've done that and I go back to Slay the Spire and you'll see now that I have a continue button and I can go back to exactly where I was in the game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did find it useful, please like and subscribe and check out more tech videos as they come out. Thank you.